Welcome to Mount Prospect Public Library's Library Life. I'm Kathy Cushing. Today we'll catch a glimpse of National Library Week's Trivia Night. We'll also delve into Lawyers at the Library, an ongoing monthly series here. And we'll enjoy a taste of Ireland via Super Saturday featuring the Hogan Irish Dancers. But first, let's find out why it's showtime at your library as we explore our entertaining 2019 summer reading program. It's showtime at your library, and patrons of all ages are debuting their literary star power by working their way through a summer reading program promising a chance to shine for everyone. This year's theme is It's Showtime at Your Library. It was the Illinois Library Association's theme this year, and we thought it would be a good opportunity to remind people that a lot of things have been adapted from books. Adults 18 and older begin their journey down MPPL's red carpet here at the Fiction AV Teen Desk, where a simple conversation can yield readers both tangible and intangible rewards. Our steps are going to be a little bit different this year, but first book read, you get a treat. So that might be some movie candy or popcorn. And then the next two books read, you'll get a completion prize, which will be a little bit bigger of a prize. And so once you read the three books, then you are eligible to win one of our many grand prizes. Prizes here are entertaining on a number of levels. We've got two dinner and a movie options, and that'll be AMC gift cards and two restaurant gift cards. And then we've got Marriott Lincolnshire gift card and a Ravinia bundle gift card and picnic basket. Meantime, back at the teen space, young adults in 6th through 12th grades are amusing themselves with great books and show-stopping library events. They sign up at the fiction desk and they can earn prizes for either reading books or coming to the teen programs, and the teen programs are fitting in with the It's Showtime theme. Starstruck teens can escape into their favorite stories and characters while scooping up oodles of prizes. When they read one book, then they earn a coupon packet full of things around the community, and then when they read either two more books or they come to two programs or a combination, that's when they get the free book. Then they can continue either reading books or coming to programs and for every one of those past the first three, that's when they earn grand prize drawing tickets. So we have a selection of grand prizes and fun this year is we're having it be like a team versus team program and they earn points for their team by competing in the summer reading program. Down in Youth Services, a star is born every day with a summer reading spectacular sure to keep young readers on the edge of their seats. Starting June 1st, you can register at the Youth Desk or you can go online, download your reading log. Um, and all you have to do is read a little bit every day and you get prizes after every 10 days. Everyone who reaches 30 days gets a book, which is very exciting. Um, but if you want to read even longer, um, if you read an extra 10 days, 20 days, even up to 60 total days over the summer, you get stars on the Wall of Fame. We have brain games going on every week and we'll have winners that get Target gift cards for doing that and they're just fun little picture puzzles. Uh, we always have a fun scavenger hunt. And then on the back of the reading log there are bonus activities and if you do those you can also get prizes. Here, literary superstars can earn prizes at every level. We have a special set of prizes for kids under age three. So we have um, applesauce, stickers, finger puppets, and a board book if those kids complete the program. Um, and then for the older kids, we have uh, scratch and sniff bookmarks, fruit snacks are always popular, and a fun one we have this year are sunglasses. When you complete the program, you get a ticket for the grand prize drawing. We have an iPad mini, 
tickets to the Marriott Lincolnshire so you can see a fun theater show. We also have a family fun package with a Caponari's gift card and some games and candy. And then for the little ones, we have a little um, food toy and then for their parents, a honey biscuit gift card. Parents have a chance to be in the prize picture as well for their work as best supporting readers. Parents are really the ones getting their kids into the library over the summer, so we want to thank them for doing that um, and for encouraging their kids to read. So every time they come in to check in with their children, they get a ticket um, and we will draw winners for Starbucks gift cards every week. Benefits here are the biggest reward for children through adults who find value in shining a spotlight on reading this summer. It's Showtime at Your Library premieres June 1st and continues through July 31st. Lawyers at the Library is a new ongoing series here at the Mount Prospect Public Library designed to help us navigate and perhaps better understand legalese. Joining me today on Library Life is one of the lawyers participating in this monthly series, Trisha Choshi of Choshi Filipponi Law. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Trisha, I'd like to start out by talking a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, well, I am a resident here in Mount Prospect since 2013. Um, I'm also a business owner here in town. My husband and I own our own law firm, Chokshi Filipponi Law LLC. We're here in downtown Mount Prospect. And we've had our office here for about three years. Um, we opened here in 2016. And we practice in a couple of, a number of practice areas. We handle immigration issues, real estate, uh, small business, litigation, and some estate planning. And you basically started Lawyers at the Library. Tell me a little bit about the premise behind this program. Sure, absolutely. Well, we're very excited about this new program. Uh, the Lawyers at the Library is essentially a legal help desk that is meant to connect residents of Mount Prospect and library patrons with legal resources so that they are able to take their first step in resolving any potential legal issues they may be going through. So now, this is a new program here at the Mount Prospect Public Library, but you did do it in Evanston. Tell me a little bit about the success with this program? Sure. Um, we were the directors of the Legal Help Desk program at the Evanston Public Library for about two years as well. And we were there on a bi monthly basis. Um, and patrons of the Evanston Library would be able to come in for 30-minute sessions mm -hmm. and speak to one of us about, uh, like I said, any legal issues they may be having. And we heard from residents on a variety of different topics. Um, some of the more um, popular topics that people came in to talk about were issues related to landlord-tenant, mm -hmm. um, issues related to estate planning, or uh, general, um, general litigation issues, things like car accidents or insurance problems or things like that. Now, why do you feel that a library is the perfect place for something like this? Well, a, a, the library is oftentimes the number one starting point for someone who has an issue. They go there seeking um, a variety of information sources, whether it's a book on the law, whether it's a book on their specific topic, search a statute, for instance, or just have access to a computer with the internet where they can connect with a lot of those of those resources. There are plenty of individuals who also represent themselves in a court proceeding and need access to information that only a library could provide because they either don't have the resources to pay someone to provide this information for them, such as a lawyer in private practice, or um, are simply not able to get to the courthouse to utilize the resources they provide. So, you know, a library, um, we feel, uh, is a good place for us to supplement um, an already vast number of resources that are, that are available. Trisha, give us some examples of what patrons might experience when they come to Lawyers at the Library. Sure. Patrons will be able to sign up for a 30-minute session, and they will be able to speak to us about an issue they may be having um, in a very private setting. We'll be mm -hmm. set up in a conference room at the library, and the sessions will be confidential. Um, even though we are not their attorney, um, and we don't necessarily have the attorney-client privilege relationship established, we will still be able to offer them a confidential setting for them to share some of their issues. Oftentimes people don't even know whether they need the help of a lawyer so this will be a good first step for them mm -hmm. to be able to just come in and you know, just assess their problem. 
after that, they'll be able to um, speak with us on how best to formulate a roadmap moving forward. Do they need a lawyer? If they need a lawyer, would we be the right people to help them? Or is there someone else out there that is far better situated for that? Um, access to resources um, is another step. Perhaps they don't need a lawyer just yet, but just need to know how to navigate a potential issue and some of the issues that are um, affecting them. And so maybe we can just set them on the course of providing those resources. Um, and of course, you know, assessing whether or not they'll be able to um, pay for a, a private lawyer. There are plenty of individuals who cannot afford one. Um, and if that is the case, is there a legal aid organization out there that might be able to assist them? And if we could provide that information, that's what we'll be able to do. Now you say we a lot, um, so who is your partner? Sure. My partner, um, who not only is my business partner, but also my husband, Augie Filipponi, um, has, has been, uh, is actually the, the one who sort of launched the first uh, legal help desk program at the Evanston Library. Mm -hmm. um, our firm actually grew out of a fantastic firm run by the Chicago Bar Foundation called the Justice Entrepreneurs Project. And so our firm has always been focused on providing more socially conscious uh, legal representation. Um, all too often, people are priced out of their day in court. Uh, they cannot afford a lawyer who, uh, under a traditional hourly billing practice, or um, you know, just can't afford the high rates that perhaps another private lawyer um, provides. And so we are always looking for more innovative ways to represent our clients, whether it's through a more limited scope type representation agreement or finding more um, consumer friendly uh, pricing practices that hopefully um, people are able to afford. So basically this is an outreach program and it's, it's really taken off quite a bit. So um, tell me, what would you say are your big goals? You know, our, our goal is knowledge. We want people to feel like they can navigate and tackle their issue with um, a sense of empowerment and dignity. Um, at, you know, as I mentioned, there are a lot of individuals out there who are forced sometimes to represent themselves in a legal system, right. and it is vast and it is complicated. And there are also individuals who work with attorneys but are forced to um, pay all of their savings, if not more, to be able to get their day and access to, to justice. And we want uh, individuals to feel like they have control of their situation. And so again, it's allowing them to come in, talk about their issues, make them feel like they know exactly where they're going. If we could provide that for patrons, we feel like we will be successful. Well, it sounds like a wonderful program. I wish you all the luck in the world with it. Thank you so much. We're very excited about it. Thank you very much for being here today. Thanks. For more information regarding Lawyers at the Library or any upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. In 1958, the American Library Association and the American Book Publishers Council established National Library Week a springtime celebration of libraries nationwide. This bit of trivia might come in handy as we peek in on a popular National Library Week event here at the Mount Prospect Public Library. 1989. Many people love the idea of a contest featuring challenging brain teasers. Here at the Mount Prospect Public Library, patrons are treated to all that and more during National Library Week's Trivia Night. Trivia is just popular in general, but perhaps because we are a library, we're afforded more authority in that area, and so people expect it to be perfect. <laughs> and you know, I will say that I went through and cited sources for every single question that we're gonna to ask tonight. Okay, let's kick off round three. Business reference librarian Joe Collier is one of a 15-member library committee meeting throughout the year in order to plan this library's National Library Week celebrations. In addition to the trivia night, we have lobby activities all week. And so we set that all up over the course of a year. National Library Week allows us a chance to celebrate together and put even more of an emphasis on our 
critical role in the community and the community partner. They died on the same day. Here at MPPL's third annual trivia night, teams of two to five participants are vying for prizes as well as bragging rights while sifting through four rounds of questions plus a bonus game changer. This year I think we have more of an emphasis on pop culture as opposed to last year where we had an emphasis on our anniversary year, it being our 75th anniversary last year. Uh, but there's history, geography, science, um, sports, you know, all the, the major trivia groups. Robert Galbraith is the pen name of which... All these questions are sourced directly from our committee. They're not from a book, they're not preset. They're, they're actual facts, but we, we generate them ourselves. Each question has one discrete answer. There will be no disputes. 23 patrons enjoy the snacks, festivities, and challenges of this fun-filled social event, which ends in one victorious team and a three-way tie for second place. Really the goal of National Library Week in general is just to get people more engaged with the library, you know, and to remind them again that we're the community partner and every person in Mount Prospect is a stakeholder in the library. As mentioned earlier, many of our 2019 National Library Week Trivia Night questions placed a spotlight on popular culture. In keeping with this theme, let's once again check in with business reference librarian Joe Collier to find out what he recommends as his best book pick from the Adult Services Department. 2018's Texas Hold'em is the 27th book in the long-running Wild Cards fantasy series edited by George R. R. Martin and written by a rotating cast of sci-fi fantasy authors. The Wild Card universe is much like ours, except for the alien virus released over New York in 1946 that mutated some into hideous jokers while bestowing powers and abilities on others deemed aces. Not everyone was directly affected, but the world was never the same again. This installment follows powerful ace The Amazing Bubbles as she chaperones her Joker daughter's school band trip to San Antonio and deals with intolerance and bigotry while juggling the normal trials and tribulations that go along with hurting teenagers. Fans of superhero fiction and teen drama will appreciate this book. Recommendations from the Adult Services Department this month highlight superhero fiction. Wild Cards is the first book in a, to date, 27 novel best-selling series edited by George R. R. Martin. In this book, an alien virus transforms human genetics to create superheroes and villains. Inside Straight, the 18th book in this Wild Card series, introduces the WC universe to a competition reality show pitting characters against each other and ultimately connecting them to a larger geopolitical landscape. Invincible Compendium 1 by Robert Kirkman focuses on an average high school teen who hides an important family secret. His father is a Superman-esque alien with powers the teen will soon inherit. In Runaways, the Complete Collection, Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn, Six young friends, all descendants of super-powered villains, vow to turn the tables on their evil legacy. And Heroes Season 1 by Tim Kring is a DVD series emulating the aesthetic style of American comic books while unfolding the stories of ordinary people who discover they have superhuman abilities. Recommendations from the Youth Services Department this month are 2020 Rebecca Caudill Young Readers Book Award nominees. In Serafina and the Black Cloak by Robert Beatty, a young girl makes it her mission to save children from a mysterious man who may be kidnapping them. The Night Diary by Vera Hira Nandani is set in 1947, recounting a 12-year-old's experience on a dangerous journey with her family, moving from her home in Pakistan to India. All's Fair in Middle School by Victoria Jameson is a graphic novel centering on a young girl's desire to accomplish two goals during her 11th year. 
one, perform in a local renaissance fair, and two, successfully make the transition to public school after being homeschooled her entire life. In the Stars Beneath Our Feet by David Barclay Moore, a grief-stricken boy whose brother is killed in a gang-related shooting escapes into the fantasy world he creates with Legos. And As Brave As You by Jason Reynolds focuses on two brothers from Brooklyn who experience country life for the first time at their grandparents' home in Virginia and learn the meaning of bravery along the way. Finally, here's youth technology librarian Laura Boss with her best book pick from this department. The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. The first rule of punk is to be yourself. How will Malu do that in a new city and school while living with her mom? They have nothing in common. Malu likes punk music, skateboarding, and making zines, a type of collage magazine. Malu's mom seems to only like things connected to her Mexican heritage. Malu is being forced to move from Florida to Chicago, Illinois. It's away from her father, who also likes punk music. Plus, she has to start a new school, and on the first day, she accidentally breaks the dress code and clashes with a mean girl. She can't talk to her mom because her mom just doesn't understand her. Malou will have to find friends to help her survive Chicago and a new school. But how do you make friends in a new city? She looks for people who also like music and creates a band. But there's a big problem. Punk isn't allowed. It's the onset of summer vacation, a time when you might be thinking of taking exotic trips to faraway lands. Let's enjoy a taste of Ireland with a Super Saturday event featuring the Hogan Irish Dancers. The toe tapping is infectious here at the Mount Prospect Public Library as the Hogan Irish Dancers take center stage with a lively program featuring 40 young performers. We will show things from the very basics of Irish dancing to the intricacies of the different shoes. There will be some educational things about Irish dancing in Ireland, why we wear the curly wigs, why the dancers keep their arms down, um, the difference between our costumes. So you'll really get a good variety of what Irish dancing is about from the traditional to the more progressive. Ready, point your toe. Caitlin Ubik, the owner of the Hogan Irish Dance Academy in Arlington Heights, started her business in May of 2017 with 40 students. Today, that number has doubled, giving this 32-year-old entrepreneur tangible validation for following her passion. I grew up Irish dancing. I started at the age of five with a neighbor and really fell in love with it and spent my childhood dancing. I went away to college and was teaching Irish dancing on the side. I had a different, different thought process for, for my career choice, but then when I really reflected on it, I found that this is what I love, it's my passion, it's what I wanted to spend my time doing. So I decided to take the leap and open my own school and teach kids. Irish dancers ranging in age from 3 to 16 years old employ a variety of musical selections as they entertain a full house of nearly 200 library patrons. We have a decent amount of traditional Irish music, reels and jigs, um, and there are a couple numbers in the show um, where we have some more progressive New Day, still Irish but you know newer instruments to the Irish world. Most of them are just instrumental, but we do have one number that's to the famous Galway Girl song. Um, it really gets the crowd clapping and into the show. Colorful costumes add to the spectacle, featuring the traditional hard and soft shoes for which Irish dancing is famous. A dancer would start in soft shoes. Those are like a ballet type of shoe. Um, not much support in them. They're easy to work with, so that's what the dancers start in. They're quiet. Um, and then as they progress, they move into hard shoes. And a hard shoe is like a tap shoe, but the tip is made of fiberglass, so they're a little bit lighter than a tap shoe. Um, and those are the shoes that everyone likes to see and hear. Um, and those are the more advanced dancers that have those. Our littlest dancers, they are not really in a costume. They wear tutus, because what three-year-old does not love a green tutu? 
Um, the next level has a green skirt and a blouse, so those are the costumes they wear when they're first starting out. Then we move to our school dress, which is what Irish dance schools are known by. Every dancing school has their own dress. Um, ours just made their debut last weekend. And then the, the last dress is the solo costume, which is the ones that have all the sparkles on them that you have to earn through placing well at competitions. Young patrons are invited to join in the fun, sharing the spotlight and trying their feet at this popular yet challenging dance genre. I think it's different. I think it's fun to watch. Um, Irish dancing has gotten very athletic in terms of the movements in the past couple of years. Um, I think people really just can't get over how they can move their feet that quickly. Super Saturday's Hogan Irish Dancers is just one example of the many entertaining informational and educational events featured here at the Mount Prospect Public Library every month. Don't miss any library programs you'd like to experience. Here's a list of events scheduled in May and June. Reservations are strongly recommended. For more information regarding these events, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. You will also find a listing and description of all upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library events in your library newsletter preview. Each month, the Mount Prospect Public Library offers countless educational and informational resources designed to help us navigate and enjoy the various aspects of our lives. With this in mind, our Library Live camera today asks the question, what library resources do you utilize most and why? Here are some responses. The computers here, um, they run really well and we can find what we want on the internet easily. I uh, use the computer, um, I use uh, the, basically the books and I also like the movies. Newspapers because they have such an excellent selection and uh, book research uh, in case I'm going to order anything from my mail order bookstore but primarily I'm using the copy machines because they're superior here. That wraps up this edition of Library Life. For more information on any of the Mount Prospect Public Library services and events highlighted here, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. And don't forget to sign up for this year's summer reading program. It's showtime at your library, running June 1st through July 31st.